Okay, February of this year, uh, my wife and I, who are both retired, decided to get away from our cold Canadian winter and spend a month of February in Panama. And this was really our first fully dedicated uh, birding trip. Uh, our goal there was to go and see as many birds as we could. Panama has about a thousand different species of birds and we were successful in seeing probably about a quarter of them. So we did not go on a, a, a birding organized tour. We, we did this ourselves. Uh, we booked the accommodations ahead of time and we rented a, had a rented car ready for us when we got down there. And we just drove ourselves. Uh, it's easy to drive down there. The roads are good. The traffic was quite reasonable. The country is safe. And when we got there, uh, we asked locals and got some recommendations for birding guides. And they actually worked out really well for us. We were able to see a lot of what we wanted to see. So what I'm hoping to give you with this video is some uh, tips and, on locations to go to, uh, what you can expect in those locations, and, and in our uh, description we're going to put uh, the names of some of the birding guides that we used. My hope is that if you watch this video uh, and you're considering a, a trip to Panama, this will help you your trip to May organization to be a little bit easier. Okay, although we're not reviewing facilities, uh, I do want to make mention of the Summit Rainforest and Golf Resort because we stayed there for a week. A uh, number of advantages there. They have a big golf, golf course, of course, and uh, there's a number of birds, some water uh, hazards that you can go see some water birds on. They have some walking trails. So we saw a large number of birds right on the resort. So that's one of the reasons it's worth uh, mentioning there. Uh, we'll make a quick mention. They, they provide free shuttle service uh, into town to go to... Uh, a mall if you want to. Uh, they also have uh, free shuttle service to see the locks and uh, so uh, worthwhile to stay there. Now one of the places that we went birding was this uh, uh, plantation trail and you can see that you park here and then you walk in. Uh, there We did see some birds there. It It is okay to go birding there but it's really uh, enclosed like the trees are quite close on the trail and it is difficult to see the birds. Um, Another day we continued on, we went to Gamboa, across, so this is the road, goes up to Gamboa, and we were looking for the Rainforest Discovery Center because the pipeline road, um, you park just outside of the Rainforest Discovery Center and you walk up the pipeline road. Uh, we did use a guide, I would recommend a guide because the, the guides know what to look for with the birds. So the, uh, getting a guide, hiring a guide is worthwhile. Now, just a couple other mentions here. We came back another day on our own and we birded. Uh, this is the ammo dump. There's a big pond in here. So there's a number of water birds in there. So uh, it is worthwhile going there. And we came up and, and just spent a few hours birding some trails and along the road in here. And we saw a surprising number of uh, small birds in the trees there. So again, it's worth a day just to drive up on your own. And when I say a day, normally what we would do is you head up in the morning as early as you can. Uh, it's best time to catch the birds and that's when it's cool. And it was in the mid thirties in the afternoon and humid. So that's the time to go back and, and rest. And then we'd go around the golf resort in the evening when it was cooler. One final mention, when you Google this um, Rainforest Discovery Center, they show this road here and they show walking across. Nobody does that. Uh, you drive up here and there's a road that goes right to the Discovery Center. It's a little bit of a rough road, uh, so just be aware of that. Um, we did see small cars on it, but if it was really, really wet, I'm not sure I would take a small car. Uh, we had a small SUV and we had no problems at all. So again, uh, lots of different birding areas around the Gamboa area and, and definitely highly recommend this area and spending several days doing it. Okay, the first pictures are from the golf course itself. Um, this was on one of the walking trails. Of course, this isn't a bird. But this was a three-toed three sloth, and she looked like she was waving at us. She's got a smile on her face, it looks like. And you can see the baby clinging to her in the face of the baby. So just a cute little uh, three-toed sloth that we got. This is a black vulture. They're very common all around Panama. These are collared aracaris, very common all around Panama. This one is kind of unusual. It's a crimson-backed tanager and you look in his beak uh, looks like he's holding something in his beak but this is actually part of his beak so he's got that unusual beak next is a keel build toucan a beautiful toucan and uh, 
Saw it in a few places, not really common, but we saw it in a few places. Now this is the little blue heron. We saw them in several places as well, but he was posing nicely by the water. This is a mass tetiria, a mass tetiria. A red-crowned wood pecker, and they were very common all around Panama as well, but he was, uh, looked like he was actually drinking or eating out of this flower. Red lord parrots, and they would come and settle for the night just outside of the hotel. This is a striated heron, and uh, this one looked like it land, came in and landed right beside us. looked like it was showing off its catch. This is a striped flycatcher. This is a yellow rumped cacicia, a yellow rump cacicia. And this is the last one from the golf course. There was a lot more birds, but this is the last one we're showing from the golf course. And just wanted to show this gives a new, whole new idea to uh, water hazards. So there's a number of these guys in one of the hazards on the golf course. This is from the uh, Pipeline Road, and this is a black stripe wood creeper. And I don't know what kind of insect he had there, but he was bashing it against the, the tree trunk to kill it. So a black stripe wood creeper, a black breasted puff bird, a broad billed mot mot. And we got quite a few, uh, we got all five mot mots in, in Panama, but this is a, a small one and, and quite cute, a broad billed mot mot. This is a uh, buff throated salator. This is a cocoa wood creeper. This is a northern barred wood creeper. Lots of wood creepers there. This is an oscillated ant bird. Um, and you can see the thick underbrush. Um, this bird, you had to wait for him to come out. Uh, if you moved, he went away. So he would come out and peek at you, and you, this was the best shot I could get. Plain brown wood creeper. And a plain xenops came out and sang for us. A slaty tailed trogon, and there are a number of trogons. A spot, spotted wood creeper. So again, lots of wood creepers. Now this next picture is where we went on the, it was called Plantation Trail. And uh, again, really thick underbrush, and it was difficult to get pictures. You're always shooting into the underbrush with high ISOs. And this is a checker-throated ant wren. This is a dot-winged ant wren. This is a fasciated uh, ant shrike, and we were one place where we went uh, when we went to the ammo dumps, and then we went out into some open roads. And uh, there's one spot where there was probably at least a dozen different species of birds. They would fly in real quick, take a peek at us, and then fly away. So you had to shoot quickly, but they'd come in and look at us, and uh, it was an interesting spot. This is a purple Galanue, and that's at the ammo dump, and you can see the foot, the big feet, so we can walk on, on the lily pads there. So a purple Galanue. This is a tricolored heron. This one is in breeding plumage. They don't always look quite as elegant as this one. And this is a white-shouldered tanager. And again, this is the one that came in with those about a dozen species that would just come in quick, take a peek at us, and then fly out again. So when we left the, the Rainforest Resort, you can see this is where it was, how close it is to Panama City. We were headed for Chitre. And uh, on our way to Chitre, we stopped uh, at a place, and I'm just going to bring it up and zoom in a little bit so that you can see it. It's called Las Macanas Ponds. Slew might be more accurate. Uh, it's not very deep in it, but there are a number of different birds there. And so we did get quite a number of birds that we saw here. So I would recommend it as a, as a stop along your way. Um, it's like 15 minutes out of the way. Do trust your GPS. The road is gravel, but it's in good shape and it's easy to get there. And they've actually developed it for uh, people to come just specifically see birds, so worth a while. Now we went to Chitre. The reason to go to Chitre is there's two beaches, Playa El Ag Agalito, and uh, this one here, you go to see shorebirds, 
and I recommend you go there at high tide because it pushes the birds in close to the shore. <clears throat> if you go uh, at another time when the, the tide is out, it's a long ways out to the shore birds. You're going to have to walk out in the mud to be able to see them. So go on high tide when it pushes the birds in. We actually like Plage Al Rattan better. Uh, it's easier to see the birds. And uh, so what you go here is to see shore birds. What's interesting is uh, the birds that we saw here, a lot of them come up to Canada and, and they spread out in the ponds in Canada. You see them in smaller numbers. Here you see them in the thousands. So there's lots of water birds, and that's the reason to go to Chitre uh, to see the water birds. On our way to Chitre, we stopped at Las Macanas Swamp. So the first pictures are from there. And this first one is a limpkin. This next one is a snail kite. This next one is a yellow-headed caracara, and it was just kind of interesting because if you look, his wings look like they're damaged uh, from something. The next one was a white ibis. And again, these were all at the swamp, but there was a whole bunch of other species there as well. Then we went into Chitre, and from Chitre we went down to the, the beaches and took pictures, and this is, of course, a brown pelican. And we saw brown pelicans in a number of places along uh, the ocean. This is a laughing gull. This is a little blue heron. So again, I said we saw them in quite a few places, but a little blue heron. And this was interesting because this was a mixed flock of shorebirds. And there were, you know, maybe a dozen different kinds of shorebirds. And what is interesting about these is these shorebirds come up and visit us in Canada. And uh, I know Canadians that go down south for the winter, uh, they call them snowbirds. And so I guess these are snowbirds. This is a snowy egret. egret. Again, we can get them up in Canada, but he must spend his winters down here. And this is a yellow tip tern. And again, there was a whole bunch of different species that we saw there. These are just a few. Okay, from Chitre, we went to Santa Fe. You can see that it's a little over two-hour drive. Uh, Santa Fe is a nice little mountain town uh, up here. Uh, Boquete is a famous mountain town. That's where a lot of foreigners go to. They actually, uh, well, over winter, actually have retired there. Santa Fe is not as popular that way. So the road is windy. Uh, it's a little bit potholed, but it is paved, and it's, it's in just fine condition. Uh, it's just not quite like going to Boquete. The services there are the same. Just because it's a smaller town, uh, it doesn't have as many services. But it's it's just as beautiful, and, and I actually enjoyed it at least as much as Boquete. Now, in Santa Fe, we hired a guide. Uh, he took us up into the Santa Fe National Park. So up in here, we went to the ranger station there. And uh, there's actually a road now that goes all the way over to the Caribbean, and he took us past the mountains on this side a little bit. Now, unfortunately, uh, this is a cloud forest, and uh, in the cloud forest, it tends to rain. Um, so just be aware. In, in Santa Fe, we did one day with a guide, and one day we went on our own. And so I, that's actually what I would recommend, uh, at least one day with a guide, because they will help you to find birds. But having said that, there are lots of trails that you can go on completely by yourself, and you will find lots of different uh, bird species by yourself as well. Okay, so uh, we saw a number of raptors in Santa Fe. Uh, this one is a black hawk eagle, and you can see he's got some prey in his talon. Uh, we just couldn't quite figure out what it was. This is a white hawk, and you can definitely see he's captured himself a squirrel he's going to take back somewhere and eat. This next one is a swallow-tailed kite, and again, he was actually eating on the fly. He w had something in his talons, and, and he was reaching down and eating it. W again, we couldn't figure out what it was. Uh, then we saw a broad-winged hawk. And then with our guide, when we went up into the mountains, uh, we saw blue-headed parrots. There was a pair of them. I don't know if they were nesting or not. Then at the ranger station, it was actually raining on us, and you can see the, that the leaves are wet. And uh, So this is a uh, bay-headed tanager. And this one is a spot wing, a spot, spotted tanager. This one is an emerald 
Tanager. And this one is a flame rumped Tanager. And these ones were all up in the Ranger Station. And then uh, this one we found on our own, but the guide had told us where we could find it. So when he brought us back, he said, if you go walking down here, you'll find this. And this is the Lessons Mot Mot. So this is one of the five Mot Mots that we saw. This is a Lesser Alania. A long billed star throat, a squirrel cuckoo, a yellow green vireo, and we saw them in a number of places, but this one just had a flower and looked kind of cute. And then there was a pair of brown throated parakeets, and uh, they were nibbling on each other here for quite a while, and they were just outside of the place that we were staying at. Okay, from Santa Fe, we went down to a small town called Boca Chica. You can see it's a three and a half hour drive, so a long drive. This is the main highway, so in excellent shape. And this road coming down here to Boca Chica, uh, Boca Chica was a small fishing town, and I think it's being developed more for, for tourism. And so this road is, they're working on it. It's being drastically improved, and uh, I'm sure the last little bit will be improved real soon. Now, Boca Chica is not on the list for most birders. But uh, there are a number of places to go see birds. You will have to go by boat. You, you want to go to the islands or across to this uh, Boca Brava island. And uh, you will see some birds that you won't see in other places. Uh, I also recommend that you do an evening tour of the mangroves. Uh, there are mangroves here and you will see a number of different kinds of birds. So it is a place where you'll see birds where you won't, that you won't see in other parts of the country. Okay, to see birds uh, in Boca Chica, you need to uh, go to some of the islands uh, by boat. This particular bird is an Isthmian wren, and uh, he's extremely cropped, so maybe not the best picture, but he had a praying mantis, so just kind of a cute picture. Uh, the next is a red-legged honeycreeper, and they were found in almost everywhere in Panama, but we got a couple of our best shots here. So he was eating something here. And this was do doing a little hopping here for us. So uh, a couple of our better pictures of red-legged honeycreepers, but they were found almost everywhere. Uh, the next one is a mangrove black hawk. And this is a, a yellow, a mangrove yellow warbler. Then we did an evening uh, tour, boat tour through the mangrove swamps, and I would recommend this highly. And uh, so when you do that tour, you can see the mangrove trees in the background. If the tide's in higher, the water would be a little higher as well. But this is a, a tricolored heron. And this is just another heron, but uh, a roseate spoonbill was one of the birds that we wanted to see there. And, and we did get that opportunity and, and just another picture of a roseate spoonbill. And uh, this is a great blue heron and they actually come all the way up to Canada, but uh, they come down here in large numbers. And so it was interesting to see where they go for their winters. And I just took this picture that shows the environment. You see the mangrove swamps and, and uh, egrets and herons and large mixed flocks. And there was probably hundreds of them there. And then finally, uh, I said this was a sunset tour. So you stay for sunset and uh, they do get some beautiful sunsets there. Okay, we went from uh, Boca Chica up to Boquete. And uh, this is, Boquete is a really popular destination with foreigners uh, both to live for the winter and for retiring permanently. Um, because of that, this is a really good four lane highway going up there. Uh, it's got lots of facilities up there, all of everything that you could want. Uh, but because of that, it's also very commercialized, so just be aware of that. What was also interesting is you're climbing up into the mountains, so it was 38 degrees down near David. When we got up to Boquete, it was about 26 degrees, so about 10 degrees cooler uh, heading up that way. So uh, that was a nice relief as well. So Boquete, uh, I'm going to zoom in here a little bit just to show some of the places to go. Okay, so our first day there, we went to what is called the Pipeline Trail, not to be confused with the Pipeline Road. So the Pipeline Trail 
uh, is on private land. You pay a small fee. It was very small fee, and, and you can walk that one yourself. You do not need a guide to do that. There are also a number of trails going up here. You see waterfall trails and all kind of trails around Boquete, again, that you can uh, just go birding on your own. So uh, might be worth your while to hire a guide for one day, but you can do lots of uh, birding on your own. Now, we also went to Finca Loretta. Uh, you can see where it is. We spent one night there, and uh, they have a ton of flowers around there, and we saw all kinds of hummingbirds. And so uh, it's a good place to go for that. We also saw the, the bellbird there. Uh, so there's some unique birds at Finca Loretta, and it's well known for that. So uh, Boquete is a, a good birding destination. Okay, in Bo Boquete, uh, the first day we went on the pipeline trail, we did that by ourselves. Uh, it's easy to do. It's on private land. It's, it's very cheap uh, to go through. And you just walk that yourself and you will see a number of birds. So this is a golden crowned warbler. This is a spot crowned wood creeper. This is an olivaceous flatbill. A flufted tufted flycatcher and this of course is a respondent quetzal and this is a bird that everybody wants to get and we were really fortunate we were walking along and he landed not that far from us he's i had to wait for the the wind to blow his tail up or else i couldn't fit him in my frame that's how close we were and he just sat there let us take hundreds of pictures and we finally left he never did so it was a really good opportunity and the last one we saw there is a, a hairy woodpecker that can come all the way up into Canada. It was just kind of unique to see him down there. Then we went to the ranger station on the Baquete side of the Quetzal Trail. We were hoping to do some hiking on the Quetzal Trail. It's known well known for hiking and for birding. Unfortunately, they had some damage uh, due to storms a number of years ago, and it's still not been repaired and opened up. So we just did some hiking right around uh, the ranger station and caught a few birds there. And this is a white-throated mountain gem. And this is a white-throated thrush. And we did get a few more around the ranger station. Uh, I stated earlier we stayed at the uh, um, Finca Loretta. It's famous for its birds. And this is a three-wattle bell bird. And you can see the big wattle that he has, and one on this side and the one that's hidden on the other side. And uh, very interesting bird. This one, he was a long ways away. This is extremely cropped, but they just open their mouth wide like this, and they just make a really loud sound, and that's, I guess, where their name comes from. So a really interesting bird that we saw there. This is a chestnut-capped brush finch, a flame-colored tanager, and then, of course, Finca Loretta is well known for its hummingbirds. They had a, they actually took their uh, hummingbird feeders away because it was in the, really in the flowering season, and they said they just wouldn't come to the, the feeders. They just went to the flowers, and you got much better pictures because of that. So this is a garden emerald. This is a lesser purple violeteer. And unfortunately, this one got stuck in here with them. Uh, red faced spinebill, not a hummingbird. But then there was a roughest-tailed hummingbird, a scintillant hummingbird, and this is one. This is the male. This is one of the smallest birds in the world, and this is the female. Then we got the snowy-bellied hummingbird, a white-tailed emerald, and then a couple other birds we got there. This is a yellow-faced grass quit, and we did see it in a number of areas. Got some good pictures here. This is a yellow-throated euphonia. And finally, a yellowish flycatcher. They were found quite a few places as well, but we got ourselves one of our better pictures here. Okay, one place we went to from Boquete, so this was just a day trip. We went to a place called Birding Paradise. And uh, what I am going to make a mention here, because we did go around later to Volcan and up that way, and 
Uh, just make a mention of this road here. We read online a, a couple places. Oh, the road is terrible. It's winding and and you it's going to be difficult to get through. They have just redone this road. It's a shortcut, so you don't have to go down to David to go over to Volcan, and the road is in excellent shape. So anyway, we went to this birding paradise, and uh, just be aware that the GPS, uh, the owner says he's trying to get it changed. Uh, but the GPS tried to take us down a road that doesn't exist. And so make sure that you get directions from the owner. But this uh, place has an amazing number of birds. All the guides that we talked to said, make sure you go to Birding Paradise. And uh, so it's it's it, as it becomes better known, I think it's going to become uh, more expensive. But when we went there, uh, the owner did a tour with us. You don't need to take a, an external guide. The, the owner himself, book with him. Uh, let him take you around and he will show you an amazing number of birds. Just make sure that you get directions so that you don't get lost on your way there. Okay, at Birding Paradise, uh, we saw the blue cap mannequin. We were lucky he came and landed right beside us and we got an excellent shot. We did also see the orange capped uh, mannequin, but he would not come out and give us a picture, but we just got a quick peek at him. This next one is the chestnut capped warbler, a crested guan, a crested oropendula, an elegant euphonia, a greenish alania, a gray cowled wood rail. A gray headed chakalaka, a laughing falcon, a mistletoe tyrannolet, an olivaceous piculet, and this one kept poking his head out of his nest, but that's the most that we got to see of him, unfortunately. A periodic flycatcher, a scaly breasted hummingbird, and there were a number of other hummingbirds, a scarlet rumped tanager, a scarlet thighed danicus, a slaty spine tail. And a striped salator and we saw many other birds as well this is just a few of the ones we saw okay when we finished in Boquete uh, we went over to a place called Bambido uh, again we took this shortcut the road is excellent no concerns there at all Bambido is halfway between the town of Volcan and Cerro Punta that's why we stayed there uh, we did stay at the Hotel Bambido again not going to review um, facilities but they have a large grounds and we did see a number of birds there so um, for that reason uh, it was a good place for us to stay now from Bambido we went up to Cerro Punta uh, we hired a guide service this was one of our more expensive trips uh, but it was worthwhile they they took us right up into the cloud forest up here now be aware in a cloud forest it tends to rain so it did rain on us but we saw a bunch of uh, regional endemic birds that are only found in Panama and Costa Rica so that was an interesting experience uh, from Bambido we went down to Volcan Lakes this is Volcan Lakes right here uh, that's a 15 20 minute car ride from there and uh, you can go birding here by yourself uh, you definitely do not need a guide and these are high altitude lakes and you will again see some birds that you will probably not see in other parts of Panama. Okay, so the first birds here I'm going to show are the ones that are found only in the highlands of uh, Panama and Costa Rica. So the first one here is the fiery throated hummingbird and you can see that it was we were in the cloud forest and it was raining. This is a sooty thrush. You can still see a little bit of the rain coming down. A blue and gold tanager a large footed finch and you can see where he gets his name from this is a flame throated warbler and it was a treat he came up and sang to us 
these are prong-billed barbettes, and we could hear them singing in the background, and uh, we almost gave up. We didn't think they were going to come up, and finally a pair came up and gave us lots of shots. This is a yellow-thighed brush finch, and you can see where they get their name from. This is a black-cheeked warbler. This is a volcano hummingbird. They sometimes nickname him the bee hummingbird because he's really small and he was sticking his tongue out for us. A talamanca hummingbird. A sooty capped bush tanager. A wren thrush. And this was an interesting experience. This was one of our target birds. Uh, our guide knew exactly where to find him but we had to walk uphill in the rain, in the mud, in thick underbrush, and it was a real challenge to get him. My ISO was pushed up to 12,800 because of the conditions, but he came out and sang and gave us a really nice picture. This is a snowy belly hummingbird. It has a little wider range, but pretty much restricted to Panama and Costa Rica with a few sightings in Colombia. This is a purple-throated mountain gem, and it has somewhat wider range. Now, this one uh, is a uh, resplendent Quetzal, and we had a better picture that I showed before, but I just had to kind of show this guy. He was not enjoying himself in the rain. Now, this is when we went to Volcan Lakes, and so this is a northern water thrush. This is a slate-throated red start. This is a summer tanager. A warbling vireo. And finally, a yellow-bellied alania. And we did see more birds in both locations, but these are just some of our highlights. So, uh, from Bambito, we went to Valley de Anton. This was the last uh, destination on our, on our birding tour. So you can see that it's a long, it was five and a half hour trip over to Valley de Anton. Valley de Anton is a, it's a very nice little town. It has lots and lots of services because it's close to Panama City. Uh, because it's close to Panama City, you have lots of commercialization as well. So just be aware uh, that it has all of that. Now, uh, we're going to give you a link to, or a name of our guide that we used here. He was by far the best guide we had in our entire trip. He is from this area and he knows exactly where to find the birds. So if you go there and you can get him, I would highly recommend it. He does do birding in the rest of the country, but this is where he's from. So in Valley d'Anton, um, it is fairly commercialized and a fairly busy little town. So there wasn't uh, many birds right in town except for the more common ones. This one, though, we did get right uh, at the place we were staying. It's a female barred antshrike. But the rest of the birds, uh, these were when we went out with a guide. So we got a black-chested jay, a buff-rumped warbler, and this is a coquette hummingbird. And this was interesting. Um, the guide knew where he lived. He says, ah, he usually comes on these branches. And sure enough, he did. I just wanted to show you that original one uh, because this is an extremely cropped image, even with my uh, OM-1, my OM Systems OM-1. This is a golden colored mannequin. A chestnut headed or a pendula. A red crowned ant tanager, a sepia capped flycatcher, a snow capped hummingbird, and again our guide knew where he lived. We went way up in the mountain to get this one. And these are spot, spot crowned barbettes, a trio of them, tawny capped euphonia. A pair of toady motmots, and again, the guide knew where he, these ones lived, and so we went and we waited and we waited, and they showed themselves. This is a white flanked ant wren. 
And finally, this one was uh, really quite interesting. This is a white-tipped sickle bill, and uh, he only feeds on these flowers, and he pushes down and sticks that long curved bill he has in there to be able to feed. And again, these flowers, there's only a few of them in the, in the forest where we went. The guide knew exactly where this bird uh, should be, and he says, we just wait, and sure enough, he did show himself. And again, we, we did see more. These are some of the highlights. Okay, and after Valley d'Anton, we went back to Panama City, stayed at a place just outside of the airport because we had to leave the next day. And so we quite enjoyed our, our trip to Panama. Uh, I hope we've given you a few uh, ideas that if, if you're considering doing something similar. Uh, again, renting a car was a simple process. Driving through Panama was a simple process. So uh, uh, something that I think that anybody can do quite easily.